A complex narrative woven throughout a new world where players are guided to enhance their understanding of a new power to reveal secrets, surprise opponents, and succeed where otherwise failure appears imminent. Where a multitude of new and returning characters guide us, both directly and indirectly, to follow their agendas in an attempt to save humanity from the overarching threat which has made itself known. Bungie's writing team hit it out of the park with Witch Queen. Yeah, that opening was about Witch Queen, not Lightfall. And while those exact same beats can be found in the framework of Lightfall's story, in the end, it feels more like a poor attempt to replicate what Witch Queen succeeded with, rather than enhance and evolve it. But that's just the quick rundown. And Lightfall is so much more than just a story contained within the campaign. So I suck at transitions. Let's just get the ball rolling. Oh, and there will be spoilers incoming for just about everything that's available currently as of week two. So you've been warned. The witness is on Earth's doorstep, breaking down the door. Traveler's been fighting back best it can, and, well, forces of Earth are falling to the witness's powers, the likes of which we've never seen before. The witness's goal? To locate and secure the veil. Its strategy? Commune with the traveler to find where the veil's been hidden, and send its most recently anointed disciple, the deposed Emperor Callus, to retrieve it and create a link. What this achieves? Like most Facebook relationship statuses used to be, it's complicated. This is a setup which introduces a threat, forms a proper mystery regarding the veil, its link to the traveler, and what the witness's goals truly are, all while creating not only suspense, but severe urgency. Immediately, the player and Osiris stow away on a Shadow Legion vessel just before it jumps to Neptune, and the story starts proper. On its own merit, I'd say that this is a decent opening episode for an action-packed season of a superhero show, but at the same time, it almost feels like it would have been better as a second part to a two-part season finale, the end of season 19 being the part one, if that makes any sense. But we progress. We attempt to weaken Kallus' forces in Neptune's orbit by scuttling one of his ships. We snag a drop pod and crash down on the surface of Neptune, right on the edge of Neomuna. And right away, something feels off. Sure, we're introduced to the Cloud Striders, the Guardians of Neomuna, but immediately our focus is shifted to the new Strand abilities, as we see and commune with an unknown dark energy around us. As the story progresses, we gain more exposure to Strand, and it is fantastic, but every single time Strand appears, it feels like the entire narrative, all of the urgency is being put on hold for Osiris to be upset about losing Sagira, irritated that he no longer feels in control, and giving no rational reasoning whatsoever as to why Strand is the only way to defeat Callus. Eventually, we learn Callus's plans. Use the artifact known as the Radial Mast to create a link with the Veil, allowing the witness to something something. Honestly, it's really not all that clear. If the veil is this year's mulligan, then the radial mass is the Chekhov's gun of the year. And when we first attempt to capture and destroy it, there's hints that it might be an artifact of the light, just as there appear to be some hints that the veil may be an artifact of the dark, at first, at least. But the mast appears to just be another pyramid tech device, like a scaled up version of one of the suppression field machines that some of the new Cabal carry around. And once it's time to destroy it proper, that's it, it's gone, no payoff at all. And it it's not even us who do the deed. Chekhov's gun never gets fired. And well, that's just not satisfying the slightest. But we continue on. We push forward and we continue to take urgency away for the sake of Strand up until the final showdown. And we win, except we don't. So here's the thing. About two thirds of the way through, Rohan holds open the radial mast. And we're just too exhausted from using Strand to do the deed. Instead, Rohan blows himself up and everyone just acts like that was the only way. And in the end, Ghost gets taken over by the witness, links with the veil without the radial mast, and Nimbus just goes and snags Ghost and brings him back to us, sadly too late, and that just feels like such a letdown. No, we're not going to shoot our own ghost, obviously, but imagine a story where we had to pull the trigger on the mast, and Rohadden died because of us, still sacrificing himself so that, you know, we could destroy it, but ultimately we did the deed, and Nimbus would have to struggle with that, struggle with the way he feels, and that there had to be another way, a way where Rohan survived, where we weren't murderers. And then at the very end, 
when we falter and fail to take the shot on our own ghosts, Nimbus would prove to us that there's always another way. Think of how much more impactful that would have been. Aside from failing to pull the trigger twice in one story and learning nothing from it, and also the constant distraction of Strand pulling away from the urgency, my other main complaints are that well, outside of the use of this Shrike sending us into a Vexnet to uh, get defenses back online and aid against the Shadow Legion, well, the Strand training Vex mission just feels like it's unnecessary blow. That could have been better served as any other mission, really. Strand not only takes the urgency from the Shadow Legion, but also now pushes it onto the Vex for a mission. That, that, that's no bueno in my opinion. Oh, and final gripe, what the hell is the bail? Rowan and Nimbus's dialogue, even Osiris is toward the end, and the Neo Mooney news reporter even, they make it seem like they know what the hell the bail is, but they never say it. The dialogue just straight up isn't good on that front. If we're gonna learn what the bail is, there should be explicit statements giving reason for us not to know yet. Something like, yeah. Oh, there's these old Ishra records about tests and early cloud art prototypes using the Veil's energy. Uh, we use it like a battery. Without it, the Neo Mooney are doomed. At least something to show that they know it as a power causal battery, but they don't have the proper knowledge of its origin and the true purpose. This is basically what's said and done, but the phrasing is far too ambiguous, and it makes it feel like some of the characters know exactly what the Veil is. Now, honestly, I don't care if I don't know exactly what the Veil is and what the hell the Witness used it for in reality. It's just about how they wrote the mystery that's disappointing to me. Not the mystery itself. We don't need all the answers. We still don't have all the answers from the questions posed in Witch Queen, but that doesn't matter because they were posed in a good way. Yeah, in a uh, pre ray twab, Bungie actually announced that uh, we will be learning more about the Veil in the next season, the season of the Deep. At least it's something. And uh, kudos to them for getting on top of the uh, feedback and letting us know that it's on the way so quickly. Oh, and uh, just to mention it, the whole time we were off on Neptune, the witness was just just uh, sitting there in space in front of the Traveler, just, you know, chilling. The Vanguard were just in the helm, blast shields down, and waiting to open them for the very end. You know, that just feels off to me. And finally, before moving on from the story, I'd like to make some minor comments about the Strike and post-campaign storylines, and all I'll say is that they are satisfying, and I am loving all of the Nezarek stuff so much. Now, on to gameplay. With Witch Queen, Bungie made some major changes to gameplay. Between the light subclass reworks that came over time, the Hive Guardians, the Overshield mods, and they took all of that and they turned it up to 11 for Lightfall. The Pyramid Tech Overshield machines are a fantastic enhancement that requires an added layer of attention beyond what the mods created. The Tormentors are amazing to fight, even when there's two of them while going through a solo legend campaign. They're like miniature rolks that just show up in the perfect number if you ask me, and they aren't quite as easily dispatched as Hive Guardians were. And in general, the legendary campaign was just a perfect solo challenge in my opinion. But my favorite change of all is the inclusion of raid light mechanics being used in ways that every player can get exposure to, making raids hundreds of times more accessible in the long run. Add to that the changes to the Vanguard playlist difficulties and other activity difficulties, and just the new approach to difficulty and challenge as a whole, and honestly, I think Destiny is in the best place it has ever been gameplay-wise. But gameplay is more than just the experience of running and gunning. There's also the build crafting changes and our new subclass, Strand. In regards to Strand, I can only speak from the perspective of a hunter, and damn, I am loving it. It feels seamless. It feels complete. It feels like it may become my new favorite subclass next to Void, honestly. And genuinely, my only real complaint about Strand with Hunter is that the grapple takes a bit too long to recharge if you don't use the melee ability during it. And sure, I'm not built into grenade recharge all that well, so that part's on me, but I've heard the exact same complaint from a few bigger names as well, so I can't be crazy to feel this way, can I? As for Warlock and Titan, I have not had the ability to experience Strand on them firsthand yet. I'm a bad gamer now, after all. But from what I've heard and seen, they are also extremely enjoyable experiences. Now, I am an avid Titan hater, and seeing Strand Titans run around it makes me want to go back on my Titan and unlock it once I have the time. But there's three major issues with Strand. The first I've already mentioned, it hijacked the story pretty damn hard. The second is that from everything Bungie said ahead of time, it sounded like we'd be unlocking Strand's base early on and enhancing it through the campaign. Instead, we got spoon fed it at key points only to unlock it after the story was said and done. And the third is, well, turn back zones just, they need to be higher up. Let me fly through the skies with it. Oh, and before I move on to build crafting, I just want to mention that as I was writing this, I learned that you can grapple rockets. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Holy shit, I love it. Now, for all of the excitement about Strand, things become somewhat more mundane for build crafting as a whole. I'm someone who had a very specific approach to my loadout. I specialized in charged with light, enhancing it periodically with font mods, but almost always keeping a build that could easily be tweaked to 
synergize with any subclass or weapon loadout. So from that perspective, a more generalized mod system would be perfect for me, right? Wrong. I genuinely hope that each season sees the introduction of new mods because the new mod system feels more like an empty shell which relies on artifact mods to fill it. Sure, it fits with my goal of having a more generalized mod loadout that works with any subclass or weapon set, but thing is, where before my mod choices synergize with my weapons and abilities, now it just feels like there really isn't any synergy at all. The abilities, weapons, and armor mods now feel like three disjointed systems rather than one multifaceted one. And sure, it's only been a few weeks, I've only had a small handful of hours with the system and we're all still learning, but it just doesn't feel as fulfilling as it used to in my opinion. I suppose only time will tell if this system becomes more refined and synergizes well with its siblings or if it remains a reminder of what we've lost. But once you've got your loadout all sorted and expand your subclass build, you're raid ready. And we've got a brand new raid for you to experience. At the time of creating this, the uh, raid still is a day away though, so um, the most I can say is my hopes regarding it. I hope the raid is Nezarek focused, and I suspect it is. I hope that it answers some question about the veil, but I doubt out that's gonna happen and I really hope that the raid has some amazing mechanics because you know the last one kind of hit it out of the ballpark for me all in all though I am just beyond excited to get to run it for the first time I'm just a little disappointed that uh, might be a while before I get to aside from the raid though the second week of life has brought us a new secret exotic late I genuinely do not want to spoil a thing from this because if you've been playing destiny 2 since year one and you miss the whisper and outbreak missions as much as I do then you are going to love this Bungie basically shadow dropped a new dungeon as a secret exotic quest. And if I don't shut up about it, I am going to spoil so much more than I want to. So for your sake, just go to the Gulch and the EDZ, collect some Vexy bits, and see for yourself what awaits. It's worth it. With all that excitement out of the way, I can't finish speaking about Lifeful without at least mentioning the first weeks of Season of Defiance. And... Uh, well, with Lightfall's urgency already being sapped by Strand's subplot, then being pulled back to Earth to defend it, it just takes away from the urgency all the more. I wish it had been handled in a way that felt more like the intended shared urgency, where the first week we are just juggling destinations to ensure humanity's survival, as well as ensuring humanity's survival. Aside from that, the week one and two stories this season have felt oddly short. I'm hoping that this is only because Bungie wants to keep focus on Lightfall until after the raid, and that uh, the season will pick up the pace in week three. Well, we have to wait for week three to uh, kind of get the answer for that one. All in all though, the season's premise has a lot of potential, and we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Oh, and uh, as you finish the new seasonal battlegrounds, you may notice that hitting tab if you're on keyboard, well, it brings up a commendation page rather than your ghost. And these commendations, they, they feel very much slapped on, like, poorly thought out in my opinion. They definitely feel like they'd be in place at the end of an LFG dungeon or raid or even trials. In other words, end game, but not the seasonal activity or strikes or anything of the sort. They just feel out of place there. And as a player who likes to explore in those last 30 seconds, I've been finding that by the time I go and give a commendation, my teammates are already in orbit and I can no longer give them any, which kind of sucks and makes the system just feel very unpolished. Oh, and speaking of unpolished, holy shit. The amount of world hold big and small across New Amuna is absurd. Every single mission, everywhere I turned, it felt like there was a ledge where I could see through the floor or fall out of bounds or just break into somewhere I shouldn't be. New Amuna is beautiful, but it feels like the time polishing it was spent on putting up pretty lights rather than patching some extremely, extremely obvious holes. And knowing Bungie's track record with patching out of bounds, if it's not a raid or dungeon skip that's being performed by big names when all eyes are on them, then it'll just go ignored. And honestly, that upsets me. Yes, I love finding out of bounds areas and exploring places I just shouldn't be. But I don't know, having such blatant access to out of bounds it just feels much less special in my opinion. Anyway, I've been rambling for quite a while. I guess it's time to wrap this up. Now, I've never done a proper review before, so I guess I'll say this much when it comes to Lightfall. The story is full of missed potential and confusing and unfulfilled mysteries. It feels like a good story base got pushed aside for the sake of Strand. It isn't horrible, definitely better than Destiny 1 Year 1 or Curse of Osiris, but after Witch Queen, it's sorely lacking. I guess if I had to score it, I'd say 5 out of 10. General gameplay though receives an 8.5 out of 10. I don't think Destiny's felt this good in a long time, if ever. And Strand I just can't rank because I haven't had the opportunity to unlock every fragment on my Hunter and while well, I haven't touched it on Titan or Warlock at all. As for the new mod system, it's a little bit too generic even for my taste, and it feels like the synergy with abilities and weapons was dumbed down just a bit too far. Play with it, 
but don't expect great things just yet. Six out of 10. And well, Raid's not out at the time recording this, so uh, I'm gonna give it a 77 out of seven just because Bungie made it. At the end though, if you enjoy Destiny for the gameplay experience above all else, Lightfall is fantastic, a must even. But if you're here for a deep connected story after Witch Queen, you might wanna sit back for a bit and wait for a good sale or even just skip it outright. Now, uh, like I said, I've never really done reviews and hell, I haven't written a video since I don't even know when. So how the hell do I sign off on these things? Oh, wait, there's a uh, generic YouTube sign off button here. I wonder what that does. Thanks for watching Squid Squad. Make sure to like and subscribe for more. I'll catch you next time. But until then, I've been Armored Squid and you've been a fantastic audience. Bye bye.